Avishek, uh, firstly, a warm welcome to you on Film Is Show Me and a huge congratulations on Drishim 2. I mean, I believe what it's crossed 100 crores, it's near uh, to crossing the 100 crore mark. So tell me, I mean, this is your first yes. film as a director, right? So, I mean, how, tell me what's going through your mind at this point. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a great feeling when every and any filmmaker's film perform like this and the love it start getting from uh, the audience. I mean, it's it's really great. Uh, people are just coming, talking to theatres and uh, they're enjoying it. They're loving it. Uh, it's a great word of mouth about the film. Uh, I think uh, people are just celebrating Drisham in theatres. I think that's the whole idea right now. We're all happy about it. And it's good for the industry. It's good for all of us. Uh, mm -hmm. We really worked hard. And when you get just kind of a payoff, uh, Everyone is happy. Yeah. And I think, you know, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that it's good for the industry because obviously I think Bollywood and Hindi cinema generally, and I'm sure even some South films too, Um, there have been a lot of films which haven't done well this year. I mean, in, in, yeah. Hindi in particular, a lot of high profile movies, unfortunately, have not lived up to the box office collections. So before we used to view 100 crores as a trend, now it almost seems like, it's a lifeline in, in, in that sense. It comes across as that way. So, I mean, what importance do you think the success of Drishim holds, especially in the current uh, situation? Uh, it does hold a big importance right now. I think uh, uh, the kind of uh, uh, response we were getting for all the films coming uh, to theaters were not really great. Uh, it, different genre tried, different kind of films came, but I think nothing was being accepted by the people. Uh, uh, maybe the content was not up to the mark uh, as per them. Uh, they were not able to relate to the film. They were not able to connect to the trailer. They, they thought we'll watch, it, watch a film later, maybe on OTT or something. But I think we need to crack, crack one thing, which is to connect with them straight from the trailer coming out uh, to them. I think that's something which we need to really focus on, how to uh, make them believe that this film is supposed to be watched in theater. Uh, right. That's something I think we all need to work. Uh, it needs to be worked on the content. Uh, it, it's not really, it also. Uh, it is cherry on the cake if you get it. But a film like Kantara opening a small number in Hindi belt, but does a massive number because it's connecting to people. People mm -hmm. are excited to watch the film. So yeah. at the same time, the marketing and the film content needs to be great. It is a combination of everything. Right, and if it's a great combination, people will do come to theaters to watch the film. I mean, it, we uh, I think got a good example set by uh, Drisham by where we have a big number uh, coming first week itself, and uh, then obviously we're hoping it crosses another milestone, another big numbers, and uh, we might be very happy with the number crossing every day. It's it's really exciting. Right, and I think you know. Um, uh... Because obviously, one thing I think what I really liked about Drishyam is that, you know, despite it being the ad adaptation, Hindi adaptation of the original Malayalam film, I found it that what it does is that it retains that human, that human touch uh, to it. There's that grit element that we really enjoyed watching in the Malayalam film, which I think you've pretty much done really well at, at presenting again. And not in a way which is emulating, but also presents it to you know, North Indian audiences, but in a way which also does justice to the original. So do you think that's also why Drisham as a remake has done pretty well because of the fact that, you know, it retains that same spirit as uh, the original rather than trying to commercialize it too much and add unnecessary masala to it. Is that, do you think that's probably a reason why it's really resonated with audiences? So I think once once we got the rights in uh, 2020, I was very clear that there's this film to be very honest to its soul. Uh, it it cannot be a typical film what we look at making a remake and uh, uh, get a you know that those numbers and those dance numbers and the song. It's not that kind of film. It's a film which has its soul in its story itself. If the story is being told correctly the way people want to see, it, uh, then it will really become big because it has its magic in its story itself. Uh, and if it's been uh, treated well, executed well. Uh, though it's a genre which people don't think uh, uh, relates to the numbers at box office, where I've been hearing that it's thriller, it might not, you know, cross this number, it might not cross that number. Even that myth is broken with the uh, uh, this film. In fact, I mean, it's a thriller film, and uh, pe people coming to theater is a is a trend which we normally see with a, a, a family film, a romantic or action film kind of a setup. Mm -hmm. But a film like a Drisham, which is a thriller, which I intentionally made more intense. 
I made it more uh, gritty and more. You know, I really went all out to make it as honest as possible. Not touching the soul of the film. I didn't uh, uh, play around too much with the uh, the actual uh, USP of the film. I would call it the yeah. whole uh, the climax is brilliant. I said mm-hmm. that's a, that's the thing which we have to be careful about. We cannot mess with it. Uh, that's the reason we bought the rights for actually. The uh-huh. climax is outstanding. That's a USP. That's what got our attention to the film. uh that's a soul that's a bible we have to follow and yeah. uh, make the entire film for the pan india audience make it more edgier more pacier and more dynamic so mm-hmm. that's the whole idea even uh, like the whole undercurrent the bgm played a lot of uh, major role in the film where people are glued to the theater screen and they just waiting for something to happen even though there is nothing happening in the scene but it's still happening so that's a, when they come to theater the word of mouth the excitement the whole adrenaline they getting that's what has gone and transformed into numbers now i think by spreading uh-huh. word of mouth right and you know i i must tell you one thing that you know you did a great job because i know you had big shoes to fill because nishikan kamath and i told ishita this is all when we did our interview i mean the way he handled the film it was the the first one it was incredible and i think you obviously had a major responsibility on your shoulders and being a first time director as on well, that too with a big brand like this i mean it was a very big risk uh, so i think number one what gave you that confidence to you know sort of go ahead and number two um what were some of the reference points for you as a filmmaker to really uh, help you tell this story in a very compelling manner uh yes i do agree it's a big responsibility so when i was taking up the film i knew what i'm getting into and uh, uh, fortunately this is my favorite genre when I, it comes to watching the films I I I love Finch I love David Finch I I think he's one of the finest uh, director in Sweden and he's my inspiration when I started this myself that's what I want to achieve uh, so uh, I used to tell my uh, team when we were writing and we were creating color palettes or we were shooting so I like just watch Finch from that's my inspiration I have lived with when I would talk about thrillers and uh, i lot i watch a lot of documentaries i watch a lot of uh, dark uh, documentaries and you know these kind of stuff so uh, for me it was kind of uh, my world which i'm entering to i love uh, this this that kind of genre so uh, taking up this responsibility obviously nishi sir was not with us anymore uh, it unfortunate event uh, and someone had to direct it and the story was so powerful and uh, i couldn't really think of anyone who could come and justify the film and mm. that's what we we decided eventually that i'll i'll do it let me handle this uh, uh, thing as a director because uh, what i have in my mind i might not be able to you know explain to the other director and the vision might clash and we might not get the result what i am i'm thinking of so i think uh, i took i took a big punt i can say i said i'll do it and i took that risk of it and i did it and, uh, i'm getting that uh, love from everyone with the whole uh, Yeah. No, definitely. And I think it is definitely I think you definitely have done a really good job. Um but I think you know when it comes to the actors uh I I mean I've interviewed um Akshay uh, Ajit Akshay Khanna and Ajit Devgan before and I know when it comes to interviews yeah. in particular they have very few words <laughs> to say especially Akshay Khanna. <laughs> he's very real and he's very honest with with whatever he says. And I, but and I think that's something yeah. which I really love about about him. Even Ajay sir is all for the same matter. um but i think when it comes to bringing them together because i think it's been what uh, over a decade i think since we last saw them together i think it was akrosh was their last film right. in my mind it was divangi because that's the sort of memory i've had of them uh right. but you know again to bring them to together again uh what was i mean of course i mean ajay devgan was bound to come back again as well but what was your brief i think in reaching out to akshay and uh you know bring presenting that sort of that shrewdness but that you know that that aptness that he has how how challenging was it for you to bring out that grayness i guess in all of them yeah i think uh, this film would have not been made without ajay sir first of all i mean uh, what he's done with vijay salgaonkar i don't i don't think i can't see anyone any actor in bollywood doing that right now because yeah absolutely uh, when i when, whenever we see drishyam uh, we don't see ajay devgan we see vijay salgaonkar uh, doing everything yeah. so it is he's got under skin of vijay salgaon was so beautifully that without him drishmi not there in hindi so i think uh, there's no doubt about that uh, coming to akshay Aksh- sir uh, when we started writing a screenplay and i said i want to make this cop character a little different uh, i don't want the way they have done it i want to 
play with it i want to really play with the character it's a lot of scope in it to uh, really play around around it uh, and uh, once we did that we started uh, writing the character and uh, we started writing the character i actually started writing the character in terms of the name of the character was akshay khanna <laughs> so we used to call it ak right and so we we thought of actor first and we started writing the character i told him if we going to get someone who would we get and i said let's let's look at akshay khanna to play this role and uh, we will uh, write it just again just disturb over don't don't mind uh, sorry yeah that's okay uh, so uh, we wrote the character with him as a character and uh, then uh, once we start writing i think we, if you seen the film yeah. the sequence where akshana goes to the house uh, oh. where three women are there so that was the first scene i wrote for the character oh. Wow. I said, uh, "What if that character comes to the house where Vijay is not there in the house, and how would he intimidate them and you know push them off the uh, cliff and make them uh, sp- uh, you know spill the bean about how bad the body would be?" Hmm. And once we started writing that uh, role, and that's the whole our journey of the character. And then when I when I met him, uh, he was a little apprehensive about the fact that it's Ajay's film. What's there in, in for me? And I made him. Read the script, and once he read it, and he said, "It's beautiful. I will do it." He jumped on it straight for day one. I think in the afternoon I had a narration with him, a little yeah. brief narration. In the evening he read the script. In the night he called me and he said, "I'm doing it." Mm-hmm. So it was just one day exercise which we did with him. And it, I mean, it's it's fortunate to have such beautiful cast on the film, and that too with such a beautiful screen print story, and yeah. they just made it so amazing for all of us. Yeah, and both Ajay, Ajay, Ajay De- Sir, and uh, Tabu Ma'am actually have had a very brilliant year this year as well, like a yeah, very yeah. great year. So it's wonderful to see them sort of come back. And of course, Akshay Khanna is a is a legend himself. But you know, I think you know when it comes to a film like this, Abhishek, because obviously, uh, you know, um, we obviously you've obviously seen you have. I I presume that you had seen Dishim. Did you see Dishim too? Actually, before you went on to make this film, or did you have to? Uh, yeah. Yeah, so I I saw the film uh, to buy the rights eventually uh, when I was planning to produce the film. Mm. At that point, I was not even intending to direct. I was thought of directing the film. So I, I we went to Kochi. We saw the film uh, in, in, on the edit itself, and uh, I said it's a fabulous story. It's a brilliant uh, uh, sequel. I mean, I have not seen such a brilliant written sequel in a long time, and um, this film will do wonders. So yeah. what we got the rights. The next question is who's going to direct it, and that's where the discussion started. And that told me, uh, why don't you think about it? And I said, uh, let me think about it. It's not easy to say yes to a film like this. So I yeah. need my own time to even evaluate. Okay, what will I bring to table? It's a remake, and okay. I was not really keen on doing it because it's a remake. But uh, then I took it as a challenge to do it and make it my own, create my own version of it, and create my own world of it. So mm-hmm. I think. Uh, Yeah, I mean, uh, I saw it only once. I would say, uh, and after that, we got a script uh, uh, in an English draft from them, and I said, just send me a draft of the film in English. And we sat and we made our own draft, and we only were working on our script when I saw the film again. Right now, this is a very interesting point because what I was going to say is that see, even though you've already seen the film, but for you as a filmmaker, right? Because I think in any craft that one has, you have to be very dedicated and very passionate about what you're doing, right? So I guess what kept ah uh, that intrigue? I think intrigue is a very important point here because obviously you, in a way, want the audience to be like, oh my god, this is this is the twist. So how did did you also have to? How did you bring that intrigue? within you as a filmmaker actually while helming drishyam too i mean i tell you uh, once when we were writing the film uh, i had several narration even though the draft was completed uh, my writer amil kian khan my creative director tony we used to have several narrations we used to keep reading the screenplay and not even once we got bored and not even once we actually felt that we knew the climax like i used to read scene and see it's so brilliant it's reading so brilliantly that even though we know it so many times but still we want to read it further because we want to know how it's opening up so that intrigue while reading it was there while watching the film on edit we always used to watch the film like every day we used to come two to three day we used to watch the film so that even after knowing the climax and the whole uh, twist and suspense so many time we always used to you know intrigue to know how this going to open i think uh, even while shooting the film it's it's it was brilliantly written i think that's the whole uh, foundation of this film uh, being that creating an intrigue about the whole uh, uh, 
uh, character, the journey of this character. I think uh, mm. it's it's the material. I think which is a king in this. I think eventually, the way yeah. it's been written, and if 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 it ha- it gets executed really well, it becomes a masterpiece. I would call it. Otherwise, it, the balance has to be correct. The writing and the execution has to go together. Otherwise, mm. if the uh, material is not that great, and even the execution is top level, it still lacks some kind of a magic in it. And the other way again. Right. And I think I'm glad you mentioned balancing because, you know, again, you know, the film, what it really does, it draws, uh, you know, to the perspective about justice, you know, what is justice, you know, because it, every character is gray. See, even though Mira technically is a victim because her son has been killed, the way she approaches and the way she acts as an ominous presence on this family who in the first place were wronged in the first place anyway, that also is a very menacing thing. So how do you think uh, Drisham 2 has really changed your perspective with the way we view ethics, morals, and justice in our society? I think uh, we all believe in one thing. Uh, when it comes to family, uh, right or wrong doesn't really matter. And that's what uh, my character in the film believe in. I mean, uh, Mira also knows that... A son had done something wrong. He shot a video of the girl and he tried to stop it. But uh, a son is killed and she just wants her revenge as a mother. And here the father, Vijay Salgaonkar, knows that uh, the daughter has done something wrong. They killed the son, they killed the guy uh, because he was doing something really wrong. But then now it's been done. Now the point is I have to protect my family. So I think that right or wrong, even in our real life, I think, is very gray area. We wouldn't really yeah. uh, go with any of thing till the time we actually in a situation where we have to really evaluate. So yeah. it's a, it's a very difficult situation. I would call it where, where Vijay and Mira is in, and uh, I hope no one really gets in that kind of situation yeah. where they have to where they have to decide. Uh, even though they know it's wrong, they have to fix it. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's a tough. It's a very tough situation for anyone to be in. I mean, in my life, I'm glad I've not gone into such. Uh, situation I never want to be in it kind of thing. Yeah. But, uh, it's, it's a crazy situation. I mean, uh, we have to stick by it. We have to stick by the family. We have to do for the family. That's what the film is all about, I think. Uh, yeah. Though it has that great tone to it, that thing, but it is just about that what we can do for our family eventually. Right. And yes, I should surely hope that you've never been in such a situation, Abhishek. <laughs> <laughs> no, Otherwise, you'll have to end up writing your own novel. <laughs> yeah, your yeah, own. Yeah. I might have to write my own Rishim novel to prove that this is from taken from this. <laughs> Absolutely, no. But I think I think it's wonderful, though. And I think, you know, we were talking about the industry. And I think right now, I think Rishim too, again, has been a huge um, testament. Because, again, you know, we were talking about the films not doing well. And, you know, you kind of explained that. But, you know, I think a lot of the films which are actually remakes uh, have not been doing that well. You know, and even though some of them were really good, like, for example, Jersey was incredible. And I absolutely loved the film. I think it really was a tearjerker. But unfortunately, it didn't live up to the box office. So how do you as a director now, um, like, how does that make you feel? Because obviously, it seems to be quite divided, isn't it? Because obviously, certain remakes haven't done well. Though Bhulbulaya 2 did really well. And now Drishim 2 hasn't well. So how are you able to gauge now what sort of content needs to be presented and what could possibly work at the box office or not? So if if I don't think anyone really can uh, uh, be accurately hundred percent right about what will work and what will not work, I mean if that that can be really judged, that no one is going to make a film which will bomb at the box office. I mean uh, we always intend to make the best of the work what we can do. Uh, uh, about remake, I think I think one thing we should really think if even even though it's a blockbuster in certain language, that doesn't mean it's going to be blockbuster in the other language. Uh, because the way people look at cinema in a particular language is very different than the other one looking in their language. Uh, for your Malayalam audience, has a different level of patience, different level of excitement to watch a certain film. Hindi belt audience doesn't have, maybe doesn't have that kind of patience or they have more patience. It's We need to really adopt into the language and the milieu of this place where you're bringing the film to. You can't just pick up the uh, remake and just make it the way they made it. I mean, it's never going to work. I don't think it's going to work because uh, there's a certain way of people, th- the writers, for example, writers, they're, they're thinking from purely from Malayalam audience point of view. They're not thinking pan India point of view. But when we're making for a Hindi, well, we are kind of thinking of North, East, West, everything. We think about everyone uh, because we, our film penetrates throughout the country. 
So yeah. uh, I think the writing is the game eventually. It doesn't matter remake or not original. Uh, we have seen original films bombing at box office. We have seen uh, remakes becoming a blockbuster. It's all about the game of writing eventually. It's nothing. Uh, it's not a trend that remake will not work. But if remake made correctly, uh, and I think uh, one more thing I want to add: if, if eventually if you uh, a, a a filmmaker who's already done the original version, and if he comes to make the remake version. He might not change a, a lot hmm. because something has really worked for him big time in the in the previous version. So he might be a little hesitant about changing things hmm. because he'll say, "Ye to chal gaya, formula has worked. Why to change the formula?" Yeah. So, so I think a different vision can really add on to the whole new approach to the new version of the film. I think that's yeah. something to really look at. Mm-hmm. And I think you know, um, and uh, and as tough as it's been for Hindi cinema in particular, I do think it's been a great learning lesson as well. And I think you know, South can be a very great source of inspiration in that sense, where you know, I think the fact that a lot of the content there is very fearless, and like I said, they're very human uh, in spirit. You know, there's no sense of romanticizing or you know, trying to present a very large than life. And I understand why that image Hindi cinema has had, of course, because it it you know it makes sense because that's what the state of the country was at that point in time. But I think what lessons do you think? Uh, I think just to elaborate on what you just said, that Hindi cinema could perhaps learn from in a way to make better content and to get back into, you know, being the great cinema that it used to offer. I think we the learning only about writing. Honestly, I I just think people need to really spend. Little more time on writing. I mean, we uh, we. Uh, I mean, I don't want to compare, but I think uh, South definitely is writing a little better. Mm-hmm. And uh, the fact that also uh, uh, we are not talking about the p- film which are not working in South. We only talk about film which are working in South. So the perception is South is working, but eventually, if you look at the calendar of South uh, South film, there are also films which are flaw. Uh, no, yeah, true. Flaw. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So and that's not coming in the limelight. Only the hit films are coming limelight, and the entire limelight is on Bollywood, which is a flop also and a hit also. Everything has been seen, mm. but in South we don't see films which are tanking at box office. We only seen KGF of the world, Pushpa of the world. I mean, they're great films, but yeah. also look at and let's not compare. We are we we are Hindi film industry. They are South industry. We are part of this big country, India. The films are coming from India within. And yes. I think we have, we have to look overall picture that uh, this, this cinema is coming from India, uh, rather than dividing within the thing that you are South film, we are all Indian film. Yes, it's not going to happen. I think uh, that division is very wrong. I think on social media also, there's a lot of division happening about South and Hindi. I think that war and the battle should be off completely. Uh, yeah. we, we need to just co- 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 collectively work on the screenplay writing. Uh, I think give time to writer, they will bring you some magic. Simple. Give yeah, time to the writer. Absolutely, and I think what you said is true. Jeet hui hai to sirf Indian cinema ki hui hai, you know, overall. And I and I definitely agree with you on that. And I and I definitely do think, and I do think it's a very positive thing that we can all take as well as creatives. But I think going forward, um, I'm gonna dare to ask you this. Uh, Dushyam three, I think, has definitely been the talk of the town. I think since this film has done really well, and I know yeah. it's very early stages. But should should you decide to make Dushyam three, what direction would you like to take it? And second part of the question is, um, obviously, you've made your first film as a director. What sort of stories would you be keen on exploring? Are you gonna stick to the thriller genre and perhaps elaborate that more now in Hindi? So, uh, Dushyam three, uh. It's too it's too early to talk about it because uh, it's just you know it's I'm not even completed seven days of my release right now. I mean, yeah, I, I, like I was telling Dad the other day. Okay, after the weekend, I feel like I've spent like twenty days because the collection is so big. Yeah, it doesn't feel like I'm on the third day. I actually because like the trend I've been seeing, the, these numbers have been collected by other film in ten, fifteen, twenty days. But uh, it just feels like it's longer time since the film release. So it's too early to, to talk about Drishyam uh, three, uh, but definitely we are talking. We are collaborating with the uh, original producers to do something uh, together now. That uh, let's let's collaborate and start working together. Let's not uh, do a kind of a film where you come early and we come one year later. We'll try to shoot together. We'll try to release together. I mean that's a, that's a better way to approach it. It's a very big brand now in in mm. in, uh, in the cinema. I think Drishyam has become a very big brand in a, a very. Uh, an entire Indian household people do talk about Drishyam. They have been seeing Drishyam on television and OTT. I think uh, there has to be a great story to part three. Only then 
it made sense to come because this is a really be high benchmark now. All right. So once we have a great story, we will definitely come with the Drishyam three. Okay, so that's that's going to be your focus now, I guess, right? For your next upcoming sort of works, right? Is that is that is that would I be right to say that as well? Um, I mean, I'm, I don't know yet. I, I have a couple of things already uh, developed, and it's brilliant. I, I have a script which I've spent like three four years on it, and it's already there, a bound script, which I I'm also contemplating right now. What's next now? Because uh, there is, and that's not a thriller. It's it's a different genre altogether. Oh. And I'm I'm not stuck to a thriller genre. Although I love it, it's my favorite space to go. I just love it, but I uh, I will not shy away from trying different genres. Uh, yeah. I I just love good writing. That's it. I think a great writing can make a great film. That's it. Absolutely. Well, look, Abhishek, we've run out of time, but it's been such a pleasure to have you. And I'm so glad that Drishyam has really changed the Drishyam of the way uh, films are being received. Bollywood films are being received at the box office. And I love yeah. the movie. I could literally watch it again, even though I know what happens in the end. Um, I think that's a good testament to you as a filmmaker and the entire team for putting such a great, great show. So congratulations and wishing you all the very best for your next work. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank, Thank you, Abhishek. Thank you so much. Bye-bye, bye-bye.